Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green. Liverpool Football Club has come to the county ground to get their butts whooped. In a stirring turn of events, it is raining in England. We are recovered from our devastating draw at Manchester City, and we're ready to go. We're fired up. Look at the boys clapping for the supporters, saying thank you. All right, here we go. Our referee is Hayden Pennyfeather. He's very English. Um, and uh, he's about to not shake hands. There they go, not touching hands. And we are going to win this game, come hell or high water. I really want to win this one. Oh, boy. Unless Steven Gerrard scores. I want to win and have Steven Gerrard score. That's the best possible outcome. So today I'm going to talk about some books I've been reading um, and books I recommend that I've, been, that I've read in the last, last couple, couple few weeks. Uh, first, I'm going to recommend a hard SF novel. Um, for those of you who don't know much about science fiction, hard SF is like science fiction that attempts to be very accurate to science insofar as possible. What a great pass there. What a great pass. Here comes your husband. Here he comes. No! Oh. Um, and I really, I, really, I, I really like hard SF because it's like a way of reading about science and reading fiction at the same time. It's really fun. Um, uh, but uh, I usually, I very rarely read hard SF that is as good as this book was. It's by a writer called John Barnes, who I first found out about. He mostly has written science fiction, but I first found out about him through, through a realistic novel that was a uh, Prince Award finalist um, called uh, Tales of the Madman Underground, and it was really good. It's got to be, and it isn't. Um, what, he was offside? Yeah, he was. All right, fair enough, linesman. Um... Uh, it was anyway. It was a really, really enjoyable read. Tales of a Madman of the Madman Underground, but um, set in the seventies and all like big and crazy. And this book, this book had all of the like heart that you look for in a great story. Like I, I definitely laughed and cried while reading it. But it also just had, I mean, phenomenally accurate, thoughtful science, which just made it so fun to read. Just from a pure, it's gotta be what. Put your head on the ball and get it in the net. You had the whole net to work with, other John Green. You're better than that. Um, it's just It was just like the science was so interesting about the actual mechanics of space travel and, uh, and all the ways that like a lot of the science fiction you read is just, like, frankly, silliness. Um, that was so fun. Just really enjoyable all the way through. I really recommend it. Losers in Space. Um, it's not, you know, the title makes you think that it is not this, like, super intellectually engaging read, when in fact it is. Um, so I read that, and then, uh, I read, uh, Gillian Flynn, is that how you say her name? Gillian? I don't know. Uh, Gone Girl, which is a very popular book of the moment sort of book. Uh, it's a thriller, it's very dark, um, very suspenseful, um, full of, uh, sort of unreliable narration or or it's more it's more complicated even than unreliable narration i would say like uh, at times reliable narration um so he'd be like that was the ninth time i lied to the police and you'd be like wait what were the what what were the first eight how come i were not i was not informed about these eight lies um but anyway it was really really fascinating um thriller very high energy. I've been trying to... I, I really love crime novels, but I've been trying to read um, more, like, proper thrillers along the lines of Gone Girl um, to try to uh, to try to understand, like, their pacing and stuff for the work that I'm doing now. And just generally because I'm not a very good plot writer, in case you haven't noticed. Oh, no. Oh, no! Oh, yeah! That was amazing. That's got to be one of the greatest saves in the history of the Swindentown Swoodly Poopers. Straight up dribbled across the freaking goal line. Oh, man. We should really be... And then I, then I did the Kool-Aid guy to celebrate. Maybe that's going to be my new thing. All right. Get it to it, El Campuncino. Thank you. All right. Uh, 37th minute, a nil-nil draw. But you can't say that it's been without, without its exciting moments. Um... So uh, I liked I liked Gone Girl. I, I I had I liked it with some reservations, but I did I did enjoy it. Um, then I read. Uh, oh, he's crowned. Go. No, it was wide. It's a good shot though. Um, then uh, then I read another uh, uh, crime novel. Uh, Michael Connelly's The Drop, um, the most recent Michael Connelly novel. I'm a huge Michael Connelly fan. His uh, his character Harry Bosch. 
His detective character is one of my favorite characters in, um, in contemporary crime fiction. Oh, ball John Green was trying to open up just a little bit of space to get a shot off, and it didn't happen, as it so often doesn't in life. That's got to be a corner kick, and it is. We love corner kicks. Bring it up. Bring the Santa Claus into town, please. There's a th he's got some room. Oh, oh! I thought he had. I thought he had a little bit of space, and that's all it takes for Ball John Green. Ball John Green doesn't need a ton of space. It's got to be Ball John Green. What is wrong with you? We're just hurtling crosses into the box. All right. So. Um, I really liked the drop, and it was one of my favorite Harry Bosch novels. Uh, I, I, what I love about Michael Connolly is that he has this ability to write in a completely unostentatious way that never calls attention to the writing, um, but that captures a lot of moral and ethical ambiguity. Um, that's look at that, look at that. Oh yeah, that that is really difficult to do as a novelist. Um, I can't do it. But I really admire people who do it well, um, you know, who write without, uh, um, you know, just just all of the all of the pretension drained away um, and just trying to tell kind of the best, truest story. Uh, I, I, I think Connolly is, is kind of one of the contemporary masters of that. Um, Woo, that was scary. And um, also, uh, uh, he's always been very nice to me in a completely unrelated story. Like, I met him first in 2006 when I, you know, I, I wasn't very successful or anything. And um, I, it was at the LA Times Book Prizes, and I, I just lost the LA Times Book Prize for an abundance of Catherines, and there was no one at my signing. I had one, two people standing in line, and so I, like, talked to the first person for, like, five minutes. And then the second person was Michael freaking Connolly. And the first thing he said to me was, kid, you got to learn how to manage a line. Um, and it's just so, like, I... I don't know. I really, it was really, really nice of him to do that and, 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 and to go well out of his way for, for you know, an unknown writer um, to encourage me to buy my book, which was very nice of him. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I never forgot that. Uh, it was really, um, but, but also, so I, anyway, I told, I told him when I met him that my mom, which is, this is true, is a massive Michael Connolly fan. Like, massive, massive, massive Michael Connolly. Like, buys all of his books the first week they come out. And he was like, um, he was very nice about it. He'd clearly heard it before. Um, but he was really, really cool. And I just heard, I don't know if this is true, but this is the word on the street. Oh, other John Green, you've got to use your foot to finish. I think I had a little time to settle there. I needed to be a little more calm. It's the Swoodley Poopers' troubles are always lack of calm. You know, just we, we can't, we don't calm down in front of goal in the way we need to. Anyway, um, I have heard that, uh, that in the new Harry Bosch novel that comes out in November, uh, I don't have any independent confirmation of this, but I've heard from multiple uh, early readers of the book that uh, Harry Bosch's daughter is reading The Fault in Our Stars in the book, which is like, the craziest go obviously i wanted you to pass to your husband in that situation he was wide open it's got to be and it is finally oh ball john green to other john green john green john green's ball another john greens they're the best forwards that swindon town has ever seen yes oh look at twice as vice just getting on other john green's back and saying carry me home fella yes Oh, that's a beautiful thing to see. We've had a lot of great crosses in this game, but we didn't have a good finish until then. And that was right on the heels of what should have been a breakaway for ball John Green, um, but his husband just couldn't get his, couldn't get his feet under the ball. Um, so uh, anyway, I really like that book. I, there, I've also been reading, um, I'm almost finished now. Look at those gloves. I'm almost finished now with uh, D.T. Max's biography of David Foster Wallace, which I think is a really good book, even though it, it didn't get particularly good reviews. Um, and I seem to be in the minority in liking it, but I, I really like it. I think it's quite interesting. I will say, as you guys probably know, I'm a little bit suspicious of the whole, like, let's learn about the life of a writer from reading um, his books and um, making all kinds of assumptions that, that character A is character A, character A in a novel is character B in real life, and that, oh, no, El Campuccino! Um... And that, like, you can draw these strictly autobiographical connections between a writer and her work. Um, but, uh, and, and there is quite a bit of that in this biography. 
um, which I, I do find at times a bit distracting. Um, I, I get the feeling that a lot of it comes from sort of a lack of source material about certain points in, in Wallace's life. But all of that aside, like, I think when I finish reading this book for, like, for an entire day, my Tumblr is going to be nothing but my, my highlights, um, the quotes I've highlighted, because there's been so much that's interesting about the relationship between reader and writer and what, what, what Wallace saw as the role of fiction, and in many ways, you know, really did establish a new kind of relationship between writer and reader and, and did, you know, claim out um, some some territory or stake out some territory that hadn't uh, really existed before or at least in a way that had been expressed, you know. I mean, he took fiction back from the ironists and, um, and in ways that were really important. Um, and as someone who, who tries very hard to write um, in a way that's mindful of irony but... Uh, but kind of, I guess, I guess opposed to irony. Um, I think like all of the writers who who are like me owe him a great debt of gratitude. So um, it's been really interesting for that reason. So I, I, I think I'll I think I'll tumble a lot of quotes uh, when I finish the book. But um, but also just because he had a very very difficult life and um a lot of times when you read biographies of writers or at least when i read biographies of writers i think to myself like you know that guy really had it all figured out and i wish i could be like him like i like i wish i i wish i had his or her life um that is not my experience at all reading this book you don't wish for one second to be david foster wallace there's no part of being david foster wallace that seems easy or fun um you know there's a excitement and playfulness uh, about his life but but you are never far away um from how how just how difficult it is and that's very important and hard to do well i think so i I've, i admire that about the book as well um yeah i found quite a, quite a lot to like in it uh yeah so that's my other recommendation um i think we might be pretty close to winning this game if we can just keep liverpool from scoring in the 90th minute we do give up a lot of 90th minute goals though we did it we did it! We emerge victorious, and our opponents smell their pits in shame. Thank you for watching. Let me know in comments what you've been reading. I'm interested to know. Look at beautiful Bob John Green's mustache. Um, let me know in comments what you've been reading, and uh, thank you for watching this Windowtown Swoodly Poopers. Best wishes.